second. Center stage on the mic. And we're putting it on wax. It's the new style. Four and three and two and one. That's what I'm talking about right there. What y'all know about the Beastie Boys? That's some old school being dropped from back in the day. Welcome back to another Beer Flow. And today we're taking a look at some various things. As you can see in front of me, I got two new Hollands. So guess what? We're rolling with the new style. That's what we're doing tonight. We're going to be talking about some new Holland later in the uh, episode. Talk about a little bit of beer news. A few other things that will pop off, I'm sure. But uh, thanks again for tuning into the show. As always, I've got the cast and the crew. I got my boy from Buffalo, my crazy man Joe. I got my boy Eric from up in Michigan in the Big MI. And right down across the river from me in Indiana, I got my boy Todd. So we're going to get into some stuff tonight. And uh, come on, guys, go to the mic and say hello. What's up, YouTube? It's Eric Alliance fan. Thanks for clicking on this video. Guys, I got Edward. Let's try this again. As you know, we're talking about New Holland beer, and I'm drinking the full circle, cool style ale. <laughs> Comes in at four and a half, or yeah, 4.4% .4 alcohol by volume. Uh, I kind of a little bit of a prelude. I always like New Holland brew, beer stuff. They make a good brewer, good beer, solid brewery. I mean, I really haven't had too many misses. Very good, Bree. Hold up. Wait a minute. What you wearing there, Eric? What you wearing, son? <laughs> I'm wearing the Rob J t-shirt, boy. <laughs> this, is, this, this is getting kind of creepy. Nice. Let's <laughs> this, though. Eric is rocking the Get Your Beer On t-shirt. So uh, definitely appreciate that and uh, sporting the love. So it's making his way around some different people. So the site is up there. We may get to that a little bit later in case anybody wants to take a look at those shirts or anything. <laughs> Cheap plug, or maybe not that cheap. <laughs> well, it can't be that cheap if it's my show. <laughs> no, that's true. That's true. It's still kind of cheap. It's cheap, I say. No, uh, I am drinking a dragon's milk. Uh, the cool thing, though, is uh, I, it probably won't focus if it doesn't. That says vintage 2015 because I dove into my cellar and was like, what What am I going to grab? I grabbed this because I figured two-year-old dragon's milk, win-win. Well, no, I oh, I yeah, so... See how it is. I'm sure, it's fucking great. But we'll see how it is. I'm sure it is. And what are you rocking, Todd? And I, I'm drinking a variant of Dragon's Milk. It's the Mexican Spice Cake Bourbon Barrel. Good check in. Very nice. Mm -hmm. That is. Let's see. Eleven, eleven percent, and actually, uh, this was bottled back in March. So it's got a little, not not a lot, but a little bit, right. almost a uh, half a year anyway. So we'll see. And for me, I was going to be one of those guys top of your glasses like this, you know, like the professors you see every day. <laughs> <laughs> Mad not, that, Hatter. not that kind of show, Rod. Not that kind of show. <laughs> the Mad Hatter IPA, starting out with that one there. Why I, I drink this one down to let it warm up a little bit. The Poet Oatmeal Stout, one of a thousand and one beers you must taste before you die, in case any of you are reading that book out there. So always a pleasure to enjoy that. Not one you want to drink ice cold. So we'll put that to the side over here, let that warm up. But uh, I got a couple of 12 ounces there. And if we go longer, I have to go to the fridge like Greg was in the fridge and see if we pull some other beer out. Awesome. Good variety of beers. Uh, I also yeah. just want to say, take a first sip of this and look. Look, if you haven't had dragon's milk in your life, owe it to yourself to pick some up. It's it's a crazy because it's a year-round bourbon barrel age imperial stout, which you rarely see, even in this day and age. And it's reasonably priced in most places in the twelve ounce bottle. So, yeah, if you haven't had it, just you gotta grab it. Well, it will say if you haven't What's had the, it, you're doing with your life if you haven't. Had it. In my area, I want to say it was. I think it was like 16 bucks a four pack, something like that. It's 16, 18, a four pack. I think individual bottles are like four, four fifty. But again, you're talking 11% Imperial Stout, Asian bourbon barrels. You compare it to any other crazy one that comes out, the founders, KBS of the world, the bourbon County and stuff reasonably priced, at least in my opinion. Oh yeah. We can pretty much get it here for about 13.99 pretty much all, all the time. Mm-hmm. 
all day. I'm every sure Rod probably gets. I'm sure Rod probably gets it for like two ninety nine. And <laughs> they pay. They pay him to drink it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> no big deal. Well, yeah. actually, some of mine I can buy the individuals, but uh, <laughs> I think the Mad Hatter. The Mad Hatter was only like a dollar eighty a bottle, I think. And the Colt was like a dollar ninety nine or something a bottle. Yeah, their core range is very reasonably priced. Even like I said, even the the dragon's milk is their core, and we'll talk about later. But part of their core range, uh, yeah, they they reasonably priced. Uh, they almost remind me of maybe not as quite up to snuff quality wise as like Lagunitas, but like price wise, very yeah. well priced. A very good tasting beer too. So. Which reminds me, let's get this son of a gun in a glass. Oh, big bubble, big smoke. Look at that smoke, bro! Shout out to Joe D on the smoke there. <laughs> Look at that smoke. I feel like Joe D's going to come through the uh, the screen and grab you and start shaking you. you know? <laughs> I want to try to get a peek of his uh, show tomorrow because they went to Great American Beer Fest last week, so I know he's got some good stories probably. They, to tell. they had it up on Tuesday. Uh, they already talked oh, about already? it. Oh, already? Okay. Yeah. So it's an archive. On that one. Yep, everyone that went there, Mark, uh, their buddy Tom, uh, it was Joe and another guy, and uh, they had a big panel, and they talked about it, and it was, I'm about halfway through it, but it seems pretty damn awesome. Yeah, yeah. A lot of good head on that one there. That should lace the glass nicely. I was going to say, is he setting that up for, for Eric to knock I only had the drum sound effect. I don't have it anymore. <laughs> you teed that one up for us. Nice grapefruit, nice citrus, little pine, little resin. A little bit of this, a little bit of that. Mm -hmm. Nice crisp texture. Good mouth coated. Yeah, that's a that's a pleasant one. If you've never had the Mad Hatter, when you're an IPA fan, I definitely suggest checking that one out. I've had this numerous times, and every time it's pretty much pleasing. <laughs> a good thing New Holland also does is they do put their dates on their bottles. Uh, now this one was actually bottled june 19th i think and we're here october so this is a little bit older that people would like think about for an ipa but it still has a nice crisp everything to it it still has real good freshness on it even though some bottles they'll say they go out 180 days um there's not really much being lost on it it's really smoothed out nice just to get a good balance between the malts and the hops they call they refer to that as a Midwest uh, IPA, right? Midwest India Pale Ale on the bottle. Do they? Yeah, they do. Midwest India Pale Ale. You're right. And while Midwest isn't technically a style like the northeastern northeastern style IPAs, I've always found Midwestern, mostly Michigan uh, IPAs, to be kind of like a, a greatly balanced between the malts and the hops. Uh, unlike nowadays, where everything seemingly is a hop bomb, uh, and that's what I've always liked about a lot of the Michigan IPAs personally. I think you get that with some of the Great Lakes beers, too, because you get a little bit of that more of that malt balance in there as well. Mm -hmm. So just never really thought of the Midwest having their own IPA. I mean, you got the Northeast, you got San Diego, you got the West Coast. I mean, why can't the Midwest have an IPA? Yeah. Why not? Yeah. We're deserving. <laughs> well, Michigan really isn't the Midwest anymore, right? Like, it used to be. I think Midwest, yeah, I think Midwest covers, like, 40 states. <laughs> <laughs> if whoever wants to join. As long as you're not on a in a coastal state, you're good to go. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, on the bottle, they tell you uh, 85 IBU. Is that right? Yeah, 85 IBU. Uh, Whimsy is celebrated with floral aromatics from assertive dry hopping and a bright hoppy body punctuated with Centennial, Citra, and Michigan-grown Cascade hops. So I didn't realize Cascade was grown in Michigan. So you got a little bit of a home taste in there. Pair with Ace Cheddar's Herb Roasted Poultry, Herb or Herb, however you want to say, Vinaigrettes, and 6 o'clock. 6 o'clock being happy hour, I take it? <laughs> My happy hour starts before 6, so I'm just wondering who's waiting at 6. Yeah. That was 5 o'clock somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> 6, you're late, my friend. You're late. <laughs> I am here in Cincinnati, 4 o'clock. In some places, 3 is the happy hour start. If you're, you're at six, it's a real happy hour. <laughs> the worst thing about working downtown Cincinnati, when you're in the office building, you see the bars, you see people go into the bars, and you're still in the office till five. <laughs> <laughs> it's happy hour for everyone but you. Yeah. <laughs> like, son of a bitch. <laughs> if, uh, if Greg's from yeah, I was going to try to – I was going to – 
kept the Mad Hatter before, but I didn't. Uh, I didn't see it today when I went to the liquor store, so I was kind of kind of disappointed on it because I haven't had it for a while and I wanted to revisit it tonight. So the Hatter has. Uh, the Hatter is a nice series because it's not just a Mad Hatter. They got a ton of different ones under that Hatter series. So it's like a fun little series to work through. One I want to get is I think it's a Tasmania Hatter, which is supposed to be like a double IPA. I think I haven't tried that one yet, and that's supposed to be pretty good. Uh-huh. Yeah, that, that's, I don't uh, think I've seen any of those here except for the Mad Hatter, I don't believe. I think the Tasmanian is a seasonal. Oh, okay. So, I, But I think it's out now, though, right? So if I see that, I should get it, is what you're saying. Well, we're going to talk about it in a while. My, my segment's already shot. <laughs> shot. Um, am I stealing your thunder right now? No, no, it doesn't matter. No, I, 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 I didn't look specifically when it was released, but yeah, I, I'm pretty sure that's a seasonal brew. So yeah, it might be the fall time. How the hell did this happen? I just, segway, right? <laughs> no, I that, that, that wasn't the segue. <laughs> <laughs> I got to go buy another one of these now. So I'm that? checking in the Untapped, and apparently I've never done the Mad Hatter. That's on you, Rob. So now, like, I gotta get another one for a review. So, oh, that's that's the worst when you have to drink another beer. <laughs> oh no! Absolutely <laughs> terrible. <laughs> Twist I've your like, arm. I've had all these other Hatters, and I never had the original Mad Hatter. That is crazy. That's <laughs> Alice in Wonderland crazy right there. <laughs> I was gonna point out when you're doing the food and beer pairing. Uh, you know, if Greg's from Greg's beer reviews, it here we go. Uh, that beer would uh. That would pair with some of your more pungent cheeses, baby, like maybe your gargonzolas or your blue cheeses, or maybe a Limburger. You know, he, he gets into it. <laughs> I thought you could do Greg from Greg's beer reviews. You did Dusty. I did, I, did, I did Dusty Greg, baby. I don't know how to do Dusty Greg, but I did. I was going to say, is that, uh, that was the same voice, wasn't it? It's basically the same voice because Greg's kind of like that, except for he doesn't have the lift. If I just talk like, in, you know, the lift, I know, I know, Dusty Greg. Dusty Greg happened. <laughs> He does talk that way, though. You're right. Without yeah, he, he has some dusty. He has some dusty roads in him. Just, just minus the lisp. That's all. <laughs> but on my untapped, I'm going to give this four point two five out of five. Very solid. Oh. Hits on a lot of different areas, and especially now. Like I said, it's four months later. It's just as smooth. Like it's as smooth as a lot of the ones that come out new. Yeah, it's nice. a solid IPA. I, I enjoy that one. Like I said it's been a while since I since I've had it. Yeah. If any of you guys had this, the, the cool know. style ale? I have not. How's that one going down? That one, it's, I'll read the description in the back here. It's 4.4%. It says, a full circle is a crisp, refreshing celebration of New Holland's belief in balance. Biscuity malt character with a low hot profile and a slight sweetness. And the food pairings are seafood, corn, veggies, and mild white cheeses. No, oh, the mild white cheeses, baby. Mild, baby. <laughs> We're talking that's about a, your mild white a... cheeses, like your, like your, like, like your mild cheddars. Oh wait, wait, white cheddar, mild white cheddar. I don't, I don't know what's happening. <laughs> it it does have the the biscuity malt that it says. It's not big, and it does have a little bit of a hot profile. I would guess maybe a little grassy note, but being at four point four, it's going to be really light. Um, when you hold it up to light, if, you, if any of you guys do that, it almost looks like a light, I, I would say even lighter than the light American lager style. It's that transparent yeah. and light looking. It's almost still like a white ale almost. Um, yeah. like the winter, like the, um, Bell's Winter White Ale. I think that's what it is. Oh, yeah. It? That's a whip beer. That's a good yeah. one. Yeah, but this one's like really, really clear and really, really white. But I, I'm enjoying it. I mean, I don't know if you guys like cool style ales at all, but this one's actually going down pretty good. I like the usually nice, refreshing quality of the Kolsch for sure. Yeah, Kolsch is for me basically follow a Pilsner esque type of you know vibe to them. It seems like a slight step up from an American style lager, but same wow. qualities: crisp, clean, refreshing. Can crush a ton of them. Yeah, kind of. Especially at four point four. Yeah, that's it's a session beer. <laughs> it's crushing, baby. <laughs> oh, Dufty, Dufty, Greg is into that. If there's some Limburger involved, baby, Limburger all day. <laughs> Dusty Greg, now nice. <laughs> Dusty Greg, baby, I come all of your punching cheese and like a gargantola. <laughs> <laughs> Any comments you guys want to make on your beers there? Uh, I would give it. A, I'd give it a B plus, A minus, right around there. I, I, I would get it again for sure. Nice. I don't think I've ever seen that one no, here. I haven't either. 
Dragon's milk. It's dragon's milk. It's dragon's milk. It's, dra it's dragon's milk. It's the milk of the dragon. It's uh, I think the one thing that, that I've got no a Game of Thrones reference for it or something. <laughs> you, Rod, you and I know that we don't, we don't, we don't, bend the knee. We don't, bend the we don't knee. F with no game. <laughs> of I know, Thrones. I know, we know, so I wouldn't know what the reference if it was true. There's no references. I don't know. F <laughs> that show. <laughs> Secular um, purpose is full. No, <laughs> the, uh, the beer itself, being two years old, uh, it's incredibly smooth, and you could not tell this is eleven percent if you're drinking this, you know, and didn't have it blind. It's crazy how smooth this beer is. Uh, but even fresh, it doesn't have like a super boozy presence right. to it. I do find though, I, I don't know how, how long they age them in the barrels. Uh, Dragons, any of the variants, including the base one that I'm drinking, um, I've never found it to be like an overly bourbon forward Imperial stout. Uh, but with age, it's even dialed back a little bit. It's just, it's extremely drinkable, which is a scary thought at 11%. Yeah. So I'm never going to age another bottle of this uh, just for fear of bad things happening. <laughs> Due to the safety of your own home. <laughs> yeah. We don't, we don't want to go down that road. As Eric, like don't drink, don't drink and drive. Don't do it while you're out. No, no, do not drag a, or do not age uh, dragon's milk ever. No, you, you, I would highly recommend. Take my share of dragon's milk. <laughs> yeah, no, just don't age it. Um, that's one of those things where I would age it actually because it's uh, it'd be cool to do a vertical of it, like maybe a five year vertical. I know a lot of people can't <laughs> sit on beer for a week, let alone five years, but <laughs> five days. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that, that's Eric. That's Eric. That's on Eric, but that is Eric. No, it's a lot of people. They, they drink it, they buy it. I mean, that's kind of what beer's for. But if you do want to uh, age some, awesome beer to age, no doubt. Yeah. What about you, Todd? Anything you would say in your Mexican spice cake? Spice cake. Yeah, no, it's a nice uh, variant of the dragon's milk. If you've had anybody's had the dragon's milk, obviously Joe's drinking it, but anybody out there who might be watching. Um, it's got nice cinnamon, kind of uh, spicy, a little bit of heat to it. Um, get a little more presence of the, of the bourbon barrel uh, bourbon flavor. I think also because it's only, well, this one's like seven months old, but not two years old, but it, uh, definitely the bourbon and it's a little more present, but it's not overpowering like Joe was saying. It's a nice mellow, I'd like to say it's a kind of an introductory type barrel age type beer for people that's not, maybe not used to them. It's not an overpowering, you know, you don't get the overpowering barrel a bourbon flavor in it. But, uh, this one's nice. It's got, it's got a little spicy on the back end, uh, some sweetness. Uh, cinnamon's definitely uh, apparent in this one. Um, it's nice. I like it. I actually it's prefer this one over the coconut. One. I didn't care much for the coconut. <laughs> but bring that down a level, Todd. Bring it down. No, um, I, I wanted to ask you specifically, Todd, about uh, have you had a chance? To, uh, how does it compare? And for anyone here who has had both of them, uh, but also other beers I've mentioned, like in the same vein, because it is a Mexican, like I guess, cake inspired beer. Um, you're talking about like your Choca Vases from Stone, uh, your <laughs> Westbrook Mexican cake, your Prairie Bomb. Uh, perennial Braxis, uh, Cigar City, uh, Hunapu. How does it compare to any of those if you've had any of those before? Um, I've had a few of them that you mentioned. I haven't had the, the Hunapu, which I've been wanting to get my hands on, but I haven't been able to get it. Um, yeah, I mean, it's comparable to those. And like I said, at the price points of these beers, you just, I mean, you can't go wrong. I think, and I think I paid. I think it was like fourteen ninety nine, maybe fifteen ninety nine for the four pack. Uh, yeah, four pack, which for a barrel aged beer is pretty good price, really. I mean, uh, I think I prefer just the regular dragon milk over the variants that I've had so far. This one is great, and if you can get it, I would say pick it up um, for sure. Anybody, you know, if you can get it, it's just got a little more of the heat, spice kind of kick to it, but. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, compared to those other ones, it's it's in the ballpark, I think. You know, I, I think it's definitely a brewery and a beer that doesn't get probably talked about enough, in my opinion. Put it on the list is what I say. Put it on It's just the because list. it is a year-round and it's not a specialty-type thing. It doesn't just the Reserve Series is special, but the regular Dragon's Milk is year-round. Yeah, that's yeah. your – yeah, the Reserve Series, they switch it yeah. out. Um, Did you also say, Ron, put it on the Ritz? Yeah. Put it on the what? Oh, put it on the Ritz. Ah, yeah. yeah, that's old school right there. Yeah, 
put it on the Ritz. Anyway, mm-hmm. uh, <laughs> as far as the Hatter, I just realized I was going through my check-in. So I'm trying to close out the Hatter series. Like I'm collecting cards. I'm trying to close out the cards right now. Gotta, so. gotta drink them all. <laughs> <laughs> So here's what I'm missing. I'm missing the White Hatter, the Imperial Hatter, the Tasmanian Hatter, the Farmhouse Hatter. It seems like those are the only ones I'm missing now. So I've had the Rye, I've had the Black, I've had the Oak Eight, Mad Hatter, the Michigan Awesome Hatter, and now the Mad Hatter. So way too many Hatters. It's almost like working a sub- <laughs> you try to work that sub- Don't be a Hatter. Real quick before you get that. <laughs> 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 hey, there's a marketing opportunity for New Holland. Make a Hatter series. Pat. Yeah, just keep just keep the series going, and people will keep buying, right? So, and and, and uh, adopt uh, Todd's <laughs> quote of "Don't be a Hatter instead of a Hater," and that would be nice. <laughs> <laughs> or be a Hatter. Yeah. Don't be a, be a Hatter. Yeah. Don't be a Hater. Be a Hatter. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. New Holland, you're welcome. Better. But there you go. Put it on T-shirts like Roger. <laughs> anyway. like, like right here, baby. Like right here. Oh, right boy. <laughs> Another cheap plug, but not cheap because we're on Ron's show. So it's just a plug. So around the beer world, let's see here. I feel like I should have like some um, eerie kind of music right now. Uh-oh. David Lynch. You guys remember David Lynch? Mm-hmm. Crazy guy, kind of. Blue Velvet, Don't Look at Me. Twin Peaks. He's yep. actually making a craft beer now. No and if any brewer where he would kind of fit in with some craziness, kind of, as you can see, like on a can or something, this one kind of works. It'll be part of the McKellar line. So you can <laughs> probably see some crazy artwork you're going to probably put on the can. Yeah. Hmm. It'll be so, interesting to see how that works out. Although the, the, the title of it was Don't Look At Me, that'd be kind of a nice one of the beer. Don't look at me. <laughs> little Dennis Hopper and the rest of it. Yeah. The- and as you review it on YouTube, what are people <laughs> supposed to do? Just listen? Yeah. <laughs> it's not conducive to YouTube beer reviews. This uh, punch comes out of the video screen. <laughs> Told you don't look at me. Dude, don't look at me. All of a sudden your screen goes black. They can only hear you. <laughs> um breweries, because you guys are going to you mean you guys go to breweries and stuff, right? I mean we all go to breweries and stuff. Every once in a while for me. No, I don't, not I don't as much as you do. <laughs> do you have a preference when you go to breweries as far as flight or pint when you go if it's a brewery that i've never been to before i always start with a flight or if they if they do half pours uh, a lot of a lot of brewers are doing half pours now where they give you like eight ounces um the reason i do that mostly is because i like variety i mean i think Ooh. i can speak for most of us here who probably don't drink a regular beer all the time you're usually drinking something new especially for reviewing purposes um which i know everything about by the way because i have a channel uh, but it's one of those things where you go to a new brewery, you kind of want to see what they offer, right? Like you want to, you want to see how they, you know, what they bring to the table, what their quality is like. So, um, getting a flight or two, and then maybe getting a full pour of your favorite beer or a couple uh, is is the way I usually go. Right. Um, but I've been gravitating a little bit more towards half pours, just because I don't see for me the necessity to drink say if a brewery has 10 beers on tap to drink all of them i'm fine with drinking three or four of them in eight ounce pours but uh it, it's one of those things where it depends on the flight size sometimes when they give you three or four ounces it's like can you really tell that's three or four sips basically so it's kind of hard to garner an opinion based on you know three or four ounces of a single beer but when they open i go flights and uh, then drink my pint but if i go to a brewery that i've already been to a bunch of times Usually just go with a pint uh, most of the time, but I still get flights here and there. I like flights. I don't know. I'm a huge fan. No. So a half pour is pretty common where you're at. I've never seen a half pour. Uh, they're, 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 they're glass, or they just like kind of measure it out in the glass. The, uh, they no, no. The, the base they just give you a half half a pint, uh, and right, they yeah. price it the same way, half of a pint. Um, it's it's one of those in betweens where. Like I said, flights are usually typically four to six ounces at most places, right. and then a pint of beer is sixteen ounces. So they try to you know bridge the gap because a lot of people again four ounces can't really tell what's going on. Sixteen ounces when you have say fifteen beers on tap is like, do I really just want to drink one or two beers when you have all this variety? So like the half pour enables you to drink maybe four to six beers, uh, but get a better understanding of each beer because you're drinking double the amount of a flight. Uh, I wouldn't say it's become commonplace but it's becoming a bit more common in my area and just in general, you'll see a lot of places, a lot like the two breweries here I know have just started doing it. So 
I think it'll become a thing. And honestly, it should be a thing. If you look at it, if they offer flights, most, most breweries do, and they offer regular pints, how hard it is to just cut the pint in half. If a pint of beer is $8, then for eight ounces, you get, it's $4. That's, I mean, it's simple math. I'm no intelligent man. I can, I can, I can do a little bit of maths occasionally. You see snowfall, cut the pint, cut the drug, you know. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You got to cut it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> next big thing might be a little thing. Who knows? Mm -hmm. <laughs> what about you, Eric or Todd? Yeah, I like I'm kind of like the same ones. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Eric. If you want. No, no, go ahead, Todd. Go ahead. <laughs> I'm kind of the same way. Uh, as Joe was saying, it's uh, it depends on the brewery. If it's a place I've visited or frequent a lot, I'll towards the you know the pint pints. If uh, if they're running some sort of uh, specials on some new newly cat stuff, then I'll go with the. Uh, uh, sample you know uh, flight so i don't you know it just kind of depends but i haven't seen in our area either the half pints which i would love that would be awesome for the same reason that joe was saying is like you could yeah. sample of beer but not a full you know you could still have six or so of them if you wanted and yep it'll be still be fine and that's a great idea what about you eric well for me it's I'll usually get it. Usually, a six or an eight ounce glass is what they come to usually around here, and that way I can get, get you know get six ounces, try out the beer. You know that's enough to me whether I'm going to like it or not. And if if I do like it, I'll make it another one. But like the one over here, just down the road from me here, Bad Brewing. I'm sure you guys have probably heard me talk about it a little bit. But they they have so many beers on tap, and they. I don't necessarily know if they're if they have like a tasting kind of I know some breweries do this they have you order five beers and you get like three ounce samples or something like that yeah, that that's what a flight them. is that's that's that? that's what a flight is basically yeah they, they don't have that over there it's like it's either a six ounce or a 16 ounce or and then you go to the growl, the howler and the growler over here but I haven't been to too many other breweries that have uh, that they can just like get a like a flight and kind of try them out and be like, oh, I want that one or this one's pretty good, you know. But like Joe said, you really can't, uh, based on a flight, you really can't tell if you're going to like a beer or not from just from that. To me, my, that's my own personal opinion. But I haven't been to too many breweries that have, I, I haven't liked their beer more or less. If I order something, I'm usually going to like it. I'm probably going to order another one. I, I think flights are one of those things where you can get an idea of whether you will prefer that beer, but until you drink, I would say at least eight ounces of any beer, I, I don't think you get a great idea. That's why, you know, beer fests are great and I love beer fests, but when you throw in palate fatigue, for instance, when you're drinking 20, you know, 15, 20 samples and your palate just gets destroyed and you're only drinking four ounces at a time. Yeah, you can indicate, okay, I do, li I like this beer or not, but you, you can't delve too far into the beer when you're drinking three or four ounces of beer, which is why when I do flights, I like to always finish with a pint or take home a growler of whatever beer was my favorite, just because, you know, I can say whatever quick, like I, you post on on tap. All right, here, I'm drinking these flights. Yeah, it's good, whatever, blah, blah. You really, it's not like a true review or a true representation of what that beer is until you actually get a can of it or get it in some kind of package form when you can drink eight plus ounces of it. So, um, flights are great to get a, I guess, a taste of what that beer has to offer. But until you, I think, fully have eight to 12 ounces of a beer, I don't think you really know what you're drinking 100%. You get like 80% of it, 75, throwing out random numbers. <laughs> I'm going to offer the alternative contrary. Oh boy, oh boy. here we go. Because fight, fight! I'm leaving the show. When I go to a brewery, especially a new brewery, I get every beer they have in flights, mm -hmm. and then I basically go through and pick apart kind of the stuff that I can kind of tell, kind of like maybe I've been fortunate or whatever like that. But I usually get a pretty good sense of it um, for what it should be. But that comes with drinking a lot of beers, I guess. I mean, it's just kind of I don't know. Maybe it's my superpower. Being able to, oh, maybe you're, maybe you have a super palate. <laughs> maybe you have a super palate. You know, there are super people out there with super palate. At beer fest, I don't usually get palate fatigue. Um, now I know how to actually modern. You know, you you space out the different things so you don't sit there constantly pounding on top of each other. But there's ways you can you know you work through and not using pickles. 
but there's ways you can actually uh, what do you mean? get the palate back working again that you don't you can actually taste a lot of the different beers and stuff. So are you saying you don't eat the pickles, you just drink the brine then? Just, just, drink, just drink the juice. Just, just drink the brine. <laughs> like no, what would I not have with pickles and juice? There you go. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think everybody's different. Um, I, when I'm speaking about palate fatigue, I'm talking about, you know, I mean, I went to, you know, the Detroit Beer Fest a couple years in a row. Uh, I think it was 2014 and 15. And, you know, I'm, over the course of five hours, I'm drinking 35 beers. Like, I was going nuts. By that 25th, 30th, 35th beer, even with eating and drinking proper amounts of water, it's like my palate's fatigued from a standpoint. is like it doesn't want to taste anymore. It just doesn't want to taste. It doesn't want to taste beer. It doesn't want to taste food. Just it's kind of done. It's like you have ruined me for the last four hours. Get away from me. Like it's done. You know, like I, I can tell you whether I like something or I don't. But like I couldn't, like I couldn't be like, oh, I'm drinking this imperial stout. Here's you know seven tasting notes. It's just like yeah, it's good. Past that. I have no idea what's happening. Like my my tongue has tapped out at that point, right? It's, like it's done. But uh, yeah, I mean, if if you if you pace yourself at a beer fest or you you pace yourself, uh, get a couple flights. Like I said, I, for me personally, I get a good understanding of if I like the beer or not. Probably to like I said, at eighty percent um, mm -hmm. accurate. But until I, for me, until I get a good. I guess a good pint of it, or even like a half pour of it. I don't really. There's times I've had a you know something in a flight, four ounces, and I'm like drinking it. It's, like, oh, it's pretty pretty damn good or whatever. Then I get a pint of it, and I realize like halfway through the pint, I'm like, oh, it's a bit too sweet or uh, right. This, 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 up in the glass. Yeah, yeah, it's warming up. This certain character is overpowering whatever, which you don't get in flights. And here's the thing about flights too is that they're served right off the tap, which is usually cold. You, you don't have enough time most of the time, unless you're going to sit there and let that. Yeah, let it sit, let it sit when I get yeah. Unless you do that and you, and you, and you, you know, <clears throat> pace yourself and show a little restraint in pounding out your beers. Um, it's one of those things where they're served right off the tap. You're talking, you know, 40 degrees, you're 38 degrees and you're like, yeah, it's cold. <laughs> if I sit here and wait 20 minutes to half an hour, sure. It, it'll warm up. But I mean, like I said, to each their own, uh, I, I like flights. A lot of people, I shouldn't say a lot of people, some people that I've seen, whether it's on the internet, real life, whatever the case may be, a lot of people don't like flights or they look down at people who drink flights. It's like, why? Who cares how someone enjoys their beer, whether they're drinking flights or half pours or full pours or growlers or whatever. Everybody tastes stuff differently and enjoys them in different, you know, different ways. So it's like if someone wants to go in a new brewery and try eight different beers, I, who might argue with that? They can have fun with it. If I want to get two pints of beer, nothing wrong with it. But you no, know, everyone likes to complain about certain things, right? So well, that's probably the same thing. But I don't like beer chuggers either. So oh yeah, how dare you chug that beer that you paid for with your money? <laughs> I don't like it. You do what I tell you to because who am I? I don't know. But before I go to the next thing, any comments out there or no mm -hmm. comments? Mm -hmm. A lot of comments. I'd like to apologize. Just let me to sure you. we're not skipping anybody. No, might be no, yeah, I'll apologize. We should have probably, you know, read them a little earlier. We started about a half an hour ago, right? So, um, Kent Beer Reviews Joe. says GG, GG, GS. I know, when, I know when PS4 and Xbox, a video game called GG's Good Game. Yeah, maybe saying good game. Maybe he's <laughs> saying, maybe he's saying get good. I don't know what he's saying, but he's saying that. Uh, Dan from Booze Review CA says, I'm enjoying an Aussie sparkling ale. <laughs> you had me to sparkling. <laughs> not really sure. Not really sure what's happening with Dan right now, but uh, if you want to. Is he in as well? <laughs> yeah. You might want to give us those details on what that exactly is. I'm looking forward to that review, Dan. <laughs> yeah. And hopefully you're reviewing it because it sounds horrible. Um, <laughs> Our buddy Chris in the basement says, good evening, gents. Chilling at my brother's place. He's on Molson Canadian, not Chris's brother. He's on, and, and Chris is on the Polish Sex Juice, which is uh, – there's a brewery in Canada called Mill Street, and they make a vanilla porter that's in nitro cans uh, that he is a huge fan of, like huge. That's why he calls it Polish Sex Juice because he's Polish. It's sexy. <laughs> and the beer's juice, apparently. Um <laughs> Craig from Camp Beer Reviews goes, that's on you, referring to Chris's brother apparently drinking Molson Canadian. Uh, Chris laughs. Uh, Dan, What's wrong with Molson Canadian? <laughs> a lot, no. Uh, so, so Dan... I got your back, brother. I got your back. <laughs> yeah, I, li I like Labatt Blue, personally. I, I like Labatt Blue. Labatt Blue is good in chili. I've used it a few times. 
it's it, yeah, it's it's a macro logger. That's when it's good and cold. <laughs> what do you do, right? Uh, Dan from Boozer View CCA again says Canadian cheddar. When we were doing the uh, when I was doing the whole uh, Dusty Greg with the more mild cheddar, the baby thumb of your Canadian cheddar. I don't even know if Canadian cheddar is a mild cheddar. <laughs> I don't even know what he refers to Canadian cheddar. I don't know, either. <laughs> I know Wisconsin cheddar, but yeah, we need we need we need a lot of details on your Aussie uh, sparkling, sparkling ale, ale. <laughs> and your Canadian cheddar because we're unfamiliar with what is transpiring at this exact moment. Chris from in the basement says, "My brother tried the left hand milk stout in cans. He loved it. He can't wait until he tries the nitro version." Because uh, I, I told uh, Chris that the left hand nitro uh bilk stout is now actually in cans and yeah. when he hopped the border he went and bought some at a local grocery store but it wasn't the nitro version it was the regular left hand milk stout in cans which is still an awesome beer it's just not nitro. Sure even that much more with that creaminess oh uh, yeah the, the left hand nitro is like uh, yeah yeah it's a beer um, sake that's what you should yeah. call it they should because it's amazing um and then craig says lastly last comment for right now says hats off to you rod <laughs> Thank you, Craig. And make sure you check out Craig over at Kent Beer Reviews. He does some yep. great stuff. I just started watching this one video that apparently he just got around to it, but it looked like it was dated back in January where he mm -hmm. was at a beer festival. So pretty good stuff there. I got to finish watching that one. His vlogs are fantastic, especially when oh, yeah. he wishes he was a pigeon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He just randomly, he's drunk. <laughs> Walking around, I believe it was the streets of London, or maybe no, it wasn't London. It was it was in his area, Ramsgate, I believe it was. And he's just like, "I wish I could be a pigeon." I'm like, "That's that's deep. That's really deep." If you're, you know, magic, it'd be great to be a pigeon, like just flying around, shitting on random things. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I worry about Craig and our UK guys and our people overseas. Every time it's like you see stuff happen and stuff. Although, yeah, not like we haven't had stuff happen here. But no, the world's a crazy place. Yeah. Which I saw there's a volcano erupting now. So, you know, we've had earthquakes. We've had Why not get volcanoes into the action? You know, they got, they got, you know, they're part of the environment as well. And uh, the, um, uh, even to shout out the UK guys even a bit more, Craig and the and you know Peter from Clue String guys, uh, they're always Harry, troopers. Harry because, Blue Nose, yeah. Yeah, Harry Blue Nose, you know, Rob Hobzine, all those guys. They, uh, they are troopers because when they, when they do watch this video, typically live, it's like, you know, 2 a.m. there. <laughs> yeah, so they're, they're dedicated. You know, I always appreciate that. Yeah, yeah. very dedicated. I mean, even even Craig, I asked him earlier. I was like, "Oh, you're gonna stop by uh, Rod Show?" And he's like, "You know, it's gonna be a 1:45 a.m. my time when you guys start that." I'm like, "Oh, yeah. oh crap, <laughs> my god!" He showed up because he's trooper. Yeah. <laughs> um, and other stuff, and I got to do this because this is a shout out to one of my buddies from back home in Jersey. Um, Great American Beer Festival. Three New Jersey breweries were named among America's best. Riverhouse Brewing, Eight and Sam Beer Company, and Spellbound Brewing. And my old buddy, uh, Scott Redden, actually runs Spellbound Brewing out in New Jersey. Out in Mount, I think it's Mount Holly where it's located. We actually went to high school together, and we were uh, partners or teammates on the track team. So it was great to see us have some good success out there and getting recognized. So if you're out there in Jersey, because we do have a lot of friends that are out in New Jersey that watch the channel and stuff like that, and on Twitter and like that, make sure you go out there and pay them a visit at Spellbound Brewing, and uh, he'll get you all set nicely. Yeah, congratulations. That's a that's a huge accomplishment. I mean, Great American Beer Fest hosts some of the best breweries in the world. Yeah. You know, let alone the you know America. You know, America has great breweries, but like that's that's uh, that's a significant honor to win a gold medal there. Really yeah, is. I, got, I got another friend I can say I knew you went. So <laughs> yeah, I've also, I've also heard of River Horse and I've had their milk stout and uh, a couple other beers. I, I really, I mean, this was years ago, but it was, their milk stout was awesome. Well, and uh, I always tell you guys about this area, and Todd knows some about this area, but uh, more people are finding out that Cincinnati Covington is now listed among the best under the radar beer destinations out there. You got six billion breweries in like a three yeah. mile court radius. <laughs> <It's like laughs> all the beer and all the stuff that we're doing here. So yeah, you know, if you guys are ever looking to get somewhere, Cincinnati is a place to go to for beer. Um, I got to update my brewery page on my uh, blog, but we're probably around forty four, forty five now. I think for breweries that are starting or about to start. So, and if you're ever looking for great deals. Uh, this, that area apparently uh, is, is amazing, right, Rod? Well, that's the funny thing with all the craft brewery action we have. We we'll still have a lot. We still have a heavy 
macro environment around the city. So a lot of these other stores that are selling the craft beers are selling them, but they're still not selling enough where they're still a surplus. So it's great. They're not as much as they're used to be, but they're still great deals that we actually get a lot of the beers out there. I mean, I actually just finally for the first time picked up a bottle of Sriracha, Rogue Sriracha. I don't think I posted that out there yet. Four ninety nine. So I was not paying a thirteen dollar price, but these people had to move the beer, so they yeah. dropped all their rogues of four ninety nine to try to get stuff off the shelf. Based on rogue beer. I'm curious to see if you ever had it. Yeah, I mean it'll be interesting, but at that price for a twenty two ounce, I'm not even worried about, you know. I don't know I don't want to drink for it, but I'm just saying I'm hoping it's worth it for that deal. But people were buying it at the twelve ninety nine, it's just not enough. Yeah, it's yeah, rogue. rogue. Yeah. Don't sign me up. <laughs> and of course, I got that uh, that um, pirate. I think it was pirate. The triple hop when they had yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I got that one there too. It's four ninety nine. So that was a good deal. Um, put one of the sites here. Actually, show you guys. So I made a comment on my Facebook page, which I think all you guys saw and everything. So I was reached out to about a co- by a company that are actually looking at doing beer jellies mm-hmm. so I think some people thought I was actually joking around but this is the actual company right here and they actually contacted me so they're actually sending me some stuff to take a look at so I can actually give feedback on it and when I think about it so that's kind of interesting so I don't know if there's like just suppose it tastes like the beers or if there was any ABV in the jelly or whatever but it's kind of an interesting take mm-hmm. like, like, my question is, are you going to give them a raw tasting? Or are you going to put them on toast or like an English muffin? Or how are, you, how are you going to roll with that? I was thinking, I don't know, maybe like do a sample of it raw and then do a sample like on toast or something. I don't know. Probably be the best way to go because, I mean, most people are buying that jelly. They're not going to just be eating it out of the jar. They're going to be throwing yeah. it on <laughs> How much alcohol is in it? You never know. I mean, bang, yeah, bang, 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 it's 1.3%. So. Yeah, yeah, it's true. <laughs> that's 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 true. That's Say, uh, what is it meant to be eaten on, do they say, specifically? No, but I mean, they're a jelly company, so they do a lot of different jellies. So I'm thinking everything you would usually put a jelly on or probably apply. But they got like a Belgian wheat one here. They got like this summer saison, a coffee stout, um, strawberry imperial pale ale, a triple ale here, um, something chipotle, peach chipotle. And then over here, snake bite beer jelly, which is an American pale ale. So I'm pretty psyched to see how they actually taste. You know, yeah, cool. Yeah, I wonder if it, I wonder if it gives you like recommendations on the different flavorings. It doesn't show anything on the website, but yeah, it'll be interesting if it's anything on the label on the backside for. Yeah. Nice little six pack of handy thing there. So put- also, the question I would have is. Um, it doesn't mention anywhere like what beers they're using. Is this their own beers? Is this a home brewing beer? Is this like a commercial beer they're using for it? Like when they say, you know, Belgian wheat beer jelly, are they using, you know, a certain brewery's beer to to, to make that jelly? It, does, it doesn't on here because it's more or less just a picture and like this little gift sampler where you can choose that there. Um, so hopefully the stuff they send to me will have some more information because I want to put a post on the blog about it as well. Um, but this is like their six pack of stuff here. Um, they said they blend local craft beer and award winning jelly. So I guess they are using beer in it. Yeah. So like, like if you see now, when you clicked on it independently, it says Foxhead Belgian wheat, bear claw, strawberry, uh, snake bite, APA, triple L peach, green head coffee, stout hog's breath, summer stays on raspberry. So I'd imagine those are the breweries, even though I've never, I've never heard any of them from, from any of them. I didn't, I didn't know they existed. So yeah, if that's, if that's an actual, uh, what was that? Foxhead Belgian wheat. Let's see. Right here, this one. The Foxhead Belgian wheat, right here. Mm, I don't. I don't know. I guess that's maybe I a that might, just, that might be just the name of the game it though. Yeah, yeah. I think that's what it is. I don't think it's you know, it's just all it is. The hogs, the hogs breath, and all that. I think it's just the name of it. Yeah, I'd be curious to see what if they're using local breweries. I. I... The peach Chipotle sounds interesting. Yeah. That sounds good. And for anybody out there that actually, you know, takes a look at jellies, because they like jellies, like to taste jellies, the site is House of Webster, so houseofwebster.com. And they got... It's interesting to know what the coffee stout one tastes like. 
Yeah, because yeah. that would be good with your breakfast, right? Like if you throw it on some toast, have a cup of coffee, yeah. I'd be like, oh, it pairs perfectly. But maybe if you had some more gargantola cheese, it'd be a little better, baby. <laughs> it's Saturday night. Or well, that, well, that Canadian cheddar. <laughs> yeah, that Canadian cheddar, baby. Oh, so mild. So mild and subtle, baby. Yeah. But you can see here they have other kinds of jellies and stuff like that. So pretty cool. Looking forward to checking it out. Um, I forgot where they're out of. I think they're from out west. Uh, let me see here. Let's see what state they're in. Uh, Arkansas, actually, so down south. Yeah, because so it said the Ozark, right? It said Ozark somewhere yeah. I saw. So not too far hey, from uh, Tom the Beer Whisperer. I was going to say, you ought to ask him about him because he's always a thinking Rogers. Yeah, I'll have to check with him as well. So that should be pretty interesting um, to actually see those. Uh, Texas, actually – is uh I'll show you this one too here let me see if i have that up here so this is just this is crazy this is cray cray baby it's like who would do this well texas would um so they don't have that <laughs> one up here texas actually has created a oreo beer shake so at the texas state wow. fair they are actually selling oreos and it's taking the whole fair by craze so people are just all over it yeah, they they do put the Oreos in your beer. Just a, an interesting I, type thing. I blame this on drunken one clearly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, somebody had somebody had to be drunk and come up with this idea at some point. So drunken one could have been the person you, for that. You cannot tell me that drunken one at some point in time in his life didn't accidentally start dipping his Oreos into some kind of beer. It's happened. It has <laughs> happened. Happen. In a yeah. scout. More yeah, than definitely. Once. No, more, more than, than once. once. Yeah. It might be like a weekly occurrence. Uh, but I don't want to speak for Jarkin One. Jarkin One, if you see this, let us know. Have you tried any Oreos in your home brews before? <laughs> <laughs> I can see Jarkin One. Yeah, well, you know, a couple of fell in there. but uh. <laughs> I can yeah. see Jarkin One dipping them in his stouts while he's uh, making some beef jerky. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah your, that's – The best thing happened by accident. I was drunk one about 99.9% to a T. <laughs> Eating Oreos in his home brewed stout, uh, preferably an Irish dry stout, and uh, eating the shit out of some beef jerky. Yeah. Sounds about right. Let me just see here. So let me pull this out. Uh, we have a couple uh, comments. I'll read that while you're, while you're doing it. Um, Chris from In the Basement says, Bro says props to Eric for the Molson Canadian comment. Hey, uh, cheers, brother. Yeah, he said he's <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I don't know about you. <laughs> and I'm not talking you, Eric. I'm talking about Chris's brother. No, um yeah, drink drink some Molson Canadian. Personally, I'm not a huge fan of Molson Canadian. Um, but drink the shit out of it if you love it. Pour it down your neck. Craig from Kent's beer review says good palate cleanser, <laughs> that jellies. Maybe have them with some dill pickles, double cleanser. <laughs> <laughs> Back to the pickles. <laughs> yeah. And then he finishes with, don't give Drunken One any ideas, Craig. This is, come on. He said Oreo jerky. That's not, come on. <laughs> nice. I mean, I try it. I'm fat. I like food, but I don't know about Oreo jerky. That doesn't sound appeasing to me. But I, you never know. You it at least once, though, right? Yeah, it could be like the sweet salty thing, right? You got the sweet Oreos with the you know salty uh, beef yeah. jerky. Good work. I wouldn't think Oreo beer shakes are a thing, yeah. but totally <laughs> exists. So here's a here's a picture of this thing here with this Oreo beer shake. Obviously, you can see the Oreo sticking out of it. You got the mm -hmm. chocolate running over the side. They give you a spoon with it because I mean, you know, it is a shake. So. Yeah, yeah. Who who doesn't want to drink their beer with a spoon? <laughs> It might, it might be drunken one holding that. I don't know. Yeah, it could be. <laughs> yeah. The cup is rimless. So here it is. So uh, it's the Brera Food Stand Oreo beer, American, blah, blah, blah. The cup is rimmed with Oreo filling and crushed up Oreo bits. The step aside, left hand. Oh, milk. now, now settle down. Oh, left hand. Hand. Yeah, left let's, hand. <laughs> let's slow this down a bit, all right? I'm sure it's pretty cool it might taste good but like slow down step aside left hand milk stout that it's is a milk bad. stout american milk stout garnished with an oreo cookie now i've had beers with desserts before that are like decadent like that. i mean they do work sometimes i never I saw something like this but yeah you know all of us here would try this in a heartbeat 
Oh yeah. <laughs> but that deserves a last hold on. The question, <laughs> question now is do they hard at this thing? Because that picture looks like a little kid with shoes in the That's true. That cup. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's true. That's I don't know who they're targeting. Well this is <laughs> they call me Flo. She said they had the best day at the Texas State Fair with baby got back brace. Or today, Oreo beer fried everything, red chuck covers, booze and food, day off, food coma, so much food, amazing boyfriend. So isn't that cute at the end? That's a lot of hashtags. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of unnecessary hashtags is what I'm seeing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not sure where Converse is. You're showing your con you're in your shoes, and it's like a hashtag Converse. Look yeah. what I'm wearing. It's like settle down. So they say that this, this, this beer's creator claims the drinkable dessert like beer features flavors of vanilla brown, sugar, and cream with hints of roasted coffee. It may sound like a misadventure, but the beer gets points for creativity. There's a lot of beers that get points for creativity. <laughs> not necessarily good. That's the problem. Right? <laughs> yeah. And this was another thing down here. We told, we mentioned, I think it was last week, about Dunkin' Donuts going in and making their beer, but... Dunkin' Donuts has teamed up with Catawba, or Catawba Brewing Company to feature a Dunkin' Pumpkin Brown Ale for National Coffee Day. And one brewery went so far as to brew a beer with Captain Crunch Cereal, which the, the Captain Crunch Cereal was supposed to be really good. But that's not really a reach when you think about that still grains that you're using. Yeah, like but you're you, using a brew, brew a beer. But there's, you know, the thing is, is there's not many many crazy ideas at this point in beer. It's, it's If you've thought of it, it's probably already been done before. Um, so this is a cool concept, but it's like, at what point is it no longer a beer? Yeah. You know? Yeah. So kind of interesting along those lines. Like brewing a beer with Cra Captain Crunch or brewing a beer, uh, you know, a Dunkin' Donuts inspired beer, whatever. It's like, I still think at the end of the day, that is a beer. Uh, you know, right. at its core, it's still, you know, you're drinking a beer. Like that beer shake. Yeah. <laughs> it, doesn't look like, it looks like more like a milkshake than an actual beer, which is concerning a bit. You're like, did that just happen? Did that just happen? Mm -hmm. <laughs> but uh, so we mentioned earlier we were going to take a look as we've been drinking New Holland tonight. So we were going to take a look at the New Holland Brewing Company. So I'm going to pull up <laughs> something here. And this is like when it's kind of cool where you're supporting the local craft brewery type stuff because you see things like this out there all the time. Um, New Holland is actually releasing a new beer here to benefit childhood burn victims. So awesome. these are kind of the good things you see about craft beer. And people say, well, does it really matter if it's craft or it's macro? And this is where it does matter because when you're supporting independent, they're actually putting money back into your community and they're helping for these type of causes. Uh, not to say that your big ones don't do things like that on some type of scale. They, you know, they all write checks, I guess, here and there, but. I think you see it more with the local independent thing you do sometimes with some of the big macros out there. So, you know, up in Grand Rapids, I don't know how far are you from Grand Rapids, Eric? Uh, from where I'm at, it's about an hour and a hour and a half, hour forty five minutes. Okay. So they're releasing this new beer. The beer is called Hoser Down. It's a red pale ale. Um, named, of course, with the fire department. So they're going to be donating uh, every beer sold, uh, $1 from every beer sold and 10% of all food sales toward the Great Lakes Bird Camp. Just a great thing that New Holland is doing out there as well. Like I said, something that you see with a lot of uh, local craft breweries where they actually put back. So with that being said, I know Joe pulled some information on New Holland as well. Okay. Hey, Rod, does that, one, does that one say if it's going to be distroed or not, or is that just at the brewery? That one looks like it's just at the brewery for right now, at least. But, yeah, I, I mean, if they distroed, I definitely would want to pick it up for sure. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if it's at the brewery, Todd. Yeah. <clears throat> or I would yeah, be surprised. Like, if you know. that's, that, that's, like, that's the thing that's cool about, like, stuff like that. Like, and craft beer, uh, craft breweries in general, they do – enlists the help of a lot of the local community you'll see a lot of collaborations between little small food brand places like here in buffalo like if you go to a local brewery they'll have food from local places like pierogies uh are, are popular here a big polish population yeah. yeah yeah there, there's even pickles dare i say there's a place here that uh that they, their own pickles. Here they cleanse Dude, the palate like you wouldn't believe <laughs> But yeah, it's awesome. I mean, I, I like you said, yeah, I wouldn't, you know, Indian Bev does do some good stuff, but they also do some really shitty stuff. So, you know, it's nice to see the local places and the smaller breweries do things like that because 
that's that's really cool you know yeah but uh yeah so as far as the aforementioned segueing into the new holland brewing company uh that is our brewery spotlight this week is the new holland brewing company we all have been drinking a beer from new holland maybe multiple beers depending on who you are at this point i know rod and eric i believe had eric did you have the same beer just twice say that say that again did you have the same beer just two bottles of it yeah yeah okay. it's the same beer. Uh, and, and and what and you're on to the uh poet there yeah, my your Alan Poe one right now with the poet. So yeah, so this is a nice pleasure to hear. Yeah, that's a, that's another. That's one of their core brands. But if you're unfamiliar with the New Holland Brewing Company, uh, you know these guys are all located within the Midwest, basically, and they are very familiar with New Holland Brewing. Uh, but if you're not in the Midwest, you might not be. They are a uh, brewery that is located in. Can you guess it? Holland, Michigan. Um, they were founded in 1997 by two individuals, Jason Spalding and Brett Vanderkamp. Uh, they have um, done a lot of good things over the years. Uh, they have grown quite a bit too. Um, as, as of right now, in this point, uh, they brew and they also distill. Uh, they actually started distilling, uh, I believe it's been whiskey, rum, and gin in 2005 and they started selling it in 2008 so they're not just a brewery anymore uh but they brew and distill in three different locations now across michigan uh well i shouldn't say across michigan two locations in holland michigan and in grand rapids michigan uh the production facility is on the north side of holland michigan uh the pub and restaurant is in downtown holland and they have a brew pub and distillery called the knickerbocker which is on the west side of grand rapids um they have 400 employees uh, they sell their beer and spirits across 38 different states, which, like I said, if you're not in the Midwest, you might not know them, but 38 states is quite a few states. Uh, there's, there's a lot of states. That's like three-fourths of the country. Um, so most people should have a somewhat a small experience, at the very least, with the brewery, or at least know of them. And they are also in four countries, which is kind of amazing. Um, so, yeah, they started in 1997 when uh, the aforementioned Brett Vanderkamp and Jason Spaulding started making and selling beer in their first pub, which was on Fairbanks Avenue in Holland. Uh, in 2001, they developed the iconic Dragon's Milk Bourbon Barrel Stout. Uh, they started you know, selling it in 2001, I believe, and uh, to this day, it is basically their flagship beer, which, again, when you're talking about flagship beers in this day and age, how many do you know that are an 11% Imperial Bourbon Barrel Age Stout? I don't know too many. That's kind of crazy. Uh, in 2005, they moved to their current uh, pub location on 8th Street in Holland, Michigan. Uh, they started expanding distribution, and they started distilling, as I mentioned. Um, they were one of the first distillers in Michigan, uh, the first in Michigan not connected to any kind of winery, and they are the oldest small distiller. Now, I don't, when they say small, I don't know what that means other than it's just a small <laughs> distiller. Still operating very vague on that. Like, yeah, we're small. I don't know what that means in terms of like, you know, production, but they say there's the the oldest small uh, distillers that's still operating. In 2006, they moved uh, production of their pa uh, packaged beer to their current location of 690 Commerce Court in Holland. Um, and a few years later, they expanded the other half of the building. They still are trying to grow and maximize the use of the space at their current location. 2016, they opened their second retail location, which uh, the the Knickerbocker in Grand Rapids, Michigan, uh, which does on-site brewing, distilling, and they have an, a full menu. Uh, they also, at some point, don't know the date because I can't find it, they brought a, uh, aboard Dave White, who is now the vice president of retail operations and partner. I don't know what happened to Jason Spaulding, if he's still uh, you know, a part of the whole thing. But the founder, uh, Brett Vanderkamp, is still the president of the brewery to this day. Um, and in 2012, this is a little bit of a nugget of information for uh, anybody in Ohio. You know, Rod, you probably mm -hmm. maybe know this news, maybe not. But their brewmaster, John Haggerty, left in 2012 to uh, start his own brewery in Dayton, Ohio, which some people might be familiar with. is called Warped Wing. Oh, yeah. Gamma bomb, baby. Gamma bomb. Yay, yay. So, uh... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's pretty much it for the, the, you know, the history of New Holland. They've been around for 20 years, but, you know, they are a smaller brewery. This isn't the, you know, the bells we're talking about or, you know, the, the stone we've talked about. I mean, those, 
are kind of iconic. I wouldn't say New, New Holland is iconic like those breweries. Uh, they're a little bit lesser known, a little bit more regional. Even though they're 38 states, I, they're still not on that level. So their history uh, and their website stuff, not as detailed as some others. So, Yeah, I mean, they're still building. Like I said, you know, mm-hmm. the one I'm drinking now, the Poet, is actually one of the ones listed in the uh, – a thousand and one beers you must taste before you die. So you think about all the breweries that are out there and all the beers, right? So if you have here where there are 50, let's just say 5,500 breweries right now. And then if you say an average brewery has about six or seven beers, you know, you run the math. That's a lot of beers out there. And for them to make it into a thousand and one, it's incredible on their part. So yeah, no, I mean, and, and I say that from just the perspective of like the amount of uh, barrels they produce and whatnot. Stone and bells are on another level, but New Holland among uh, you know you have to be a beer geek if you're just slightly knowledgeable about beer in general and specifically craft beer. You, you should know New Holland, and you probably should know Dragon's Mill. I mean, those have been beers talked about for a long time. The phone's gonna ring. <laughs> <laughs> we're just we're just, we're just gonna let the phone ring. That's you know, Paul's calling. Paul's calling. Uh, so I know what's up. So anyway, um, while the phone's being an asshole, we're going to go on to uh, the beers they produce. And uh, some of the beers they produce are uh, the beers that a, a couple people have had. Their core offerings. Rod had two of them today. Uh, first and foremost is Mad Hatter. It's a Midwest IPA. What does that mean? Nobody actually knows. <laughs> but it's one of their core beers. It's a Midwest IPA. Uh, they brew it with, uh, Rod already went over, but Centennial Citra, Michigan, Michigan-grown Cascade hops. But it is like their, I guess it's like their basically, you know, flagship outside of Dragon's Milk, right? Um, a lot of people know about that. Hey, I, I can say it's one of their flagships just because they started distributing in Western New York. What two beers did they bring here? Mad Hatter, Dragon's Milk. I think that's pretty much does it all, right? The first two beers. Um, so it's it's Midwest IPA. What the fuck that means? One of their core uh, offerings. Uh, <laughs> another one they have. Uh, the other one, I guess, you know, they have. I believe it is um, five core offerings. And Rod drank two of them tonight. The poet she has right now, literally right now, he's drinking on it. It is their five point two percent oatmeal stout. Um, they first brewed it in nineteen ninety nine. So that recipe is pretty damn old and it still holds up it's a good good oatmeal stout um if you've never had an oatmeal stout i think about oatmeal stouts there's not a lot of them nowadays like it's not it's you know a classic style and whatnot but it's still one of those styles that you know people don't brew too much anymore think about it it's almost like the creaminess before the nitro craze right so that's yeah your beer is creamier yeah and you know what's funny is uh, it allowed oats i feel like that style specifically allowed oats to be used in the new england style ipas when you get a new england style ipas it's about the mouthfeel the creaminess and they a lot of them now use oats and lactose and stuff to produce the the murkiness but also the the, the creaminess of the mouthfeel oatmeal stouts way before it's time way before it's time <laughs> they knew what was up yeah my only, yeah. my only knock on this beer though mm-hmm. is really the thinness it's thin like a porter and I like my stuff a little more heartier, but you do get that oatmeal creaminess. Gotcha. Gotcha. It's uh yeah, and again, again, it's one of those things too where there's not a, a lot of people don't drink a lot of regular stouts nowadays. So that's like a regular five point two percent. Like a yeah. lot of people are like, if it's not at least eight percent imperial, F it. Like, mm. no, there's still some good ones. <laughs> Definitely still some good ones. Um, they also have a uh a beer which I, I've never heard of. I'd be curious to see if uh specifically Eric, because he's in Michigan, but anyone else, they have, and this is part of their core offering according to their website, the Lost Dune, which is a uh, uh re- they call it a refreshing and aromatic summer ale. They brew it with mosaic hops, blueberries, and then uh coriander. It's a golden I've seen ale. It, but I haven't tried it. That sounds interesting because blueberries, coriander, you can say, okay, it's kind of in the vein of like a, a vit beer or something like that, but now they add mosaic hops and they're like a little bit hoppier. Sounds cool. I've never seen it. Um, I guess it's one of those beer we'll have to try at some point. What's the but, name yeah. of the Lost? The Lost, Lost Dune. Dune. D-U-N-E. Dune. Pairing, baby. Yeah, I've, never seen, I've and, never seen that one. It's Thalman and Pork and Basil and Mint and Fruit Crisp. Fruit Crisps. I don't know. They first brewed in 2016, which is why it's probably one Todd hasn't seen, and a lot of us have, you know, no idea what's going on with it. So it's an, it's a newer offering, but apparently a pair of their it's a part of their uh, core brews. They they specifically though on the website say refreshing and aromatic summer ale. I mean, it's a core, core brew means it's year round. I don't know where high is summer ale. I mean, that'd be a seasonal. <laughs> I mean, it's a seasonal. It's just the summer, but yeah, I don't know what you're doing. 
No, it's a YouTube <laughs> website, you Alan, but like, let's go. <laughs> Help somebody out here. Right now. <laughs> yeah, what are you doing? You're trolling? You're trolling New, Eng New Holland? I almost called you New England. It doesn't even matter at this point. Probably not, because your website and things. Uh, they yeah. also have uh, Hoptronics uh, as one of their core brews. That's what I just passed up on. I want to get at some point. I've seen Hoptronics here. Again, it was another one that was first brewed in 2016, so a newer, uh, I guess, a newer um, introduction into the their, their core brew. Uh, it's brewed exclusively with Mosaic hops, and it is a double IPA. It comes in at 9%, so a big one. You know what they say, the pairing thou, baby? I'm thinking cheese. Yeah, I can hold it. <laughs> what about that Canadian cheddar? Uh, that's too mild, baby. It's not too <laughs> better. <laughs> um, they also have a beer uh, as again, New Holland. A lot of your core brews have either they're either brand new, like you know, the last year, or they haven't even come out yet. They have a beer coming out called Extra Time, <laughs> which they're referring to as an American session beer. And their uh, description for the beer is a light, easy drinking, perfect beer for life's adventures or a relaxing day off. Extra Time's crisp, refreshing taste will keep with you no matter your pace. Available nationwide in 2018. Again, they first brewed it in 2016. I guess it's going to be in all their distribution areas by next year. It's a 4.4%. Uh, like they're using Kolsch yeast. They're using Pilsner malt. They're using white wheat malt. It's all over the place. They're going for session. It's not quite a wheat beer, not quite a Pilsner, not quite a Kolsch. Session beer, 4.4%. Um, I guess keep an eye on it. That sounds kind of interesting to see if it's crushable in the vein of the full circle that Eric's drinking right now, you know? Or something similar to that, maybe. Who knows? Last and least, but not least, actually. Let me take that back. This is the core brew, Dragon's Milk. Come on, it's Dragon's Milk. Uh, <laughs> this is their flagship beer, Bourbon Barrel Asian Pale Stout, 11%. They first brewed it in 2001. It's been around you know, for 15-plus years, and uh, it's available everywhere they distribute. It's a widely uh, available, highly regarded beer that if you haven't had before, as I said earlier, you got to <laughs> try it. Somebody well, hit drag his milk. You just say thank you. Don't even say anything else. Yeah, as, as, as Rod said earlier, and I'm going to paraphrase because I don't remember the exact quote, but it was something like, what are you doing with your life if you haven't had dragons? Like, what are you doing? <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> uh, it, all right, so to move into their uh, limited brews, uh, they have uh, Bitter Anomaly, which is a uh, Honey Baltic Porter. Never seen this beer. First brew, 2017. Guess they're just revamping their lineup at this point. Um a honey Baltic Porter sounds pretty interesting. Uh, I, I've i never never heard of it, you guys. Balt, Baltic Anomaly? I've not had that one. Uh, honey honey Baltic Porter. Now, I've had their Beer Hive. I don't know if that's mentioned on your list. Uh, honey Ginger Triple. We, we, yeah, I, don't <laughs> I don't know if we'll get to that. I don't know if we'll get to that. I don't know. There's so many beers that New Holland is just like, here's you know, this, this one last month. Like you know, I feel like you have to hit them all, but you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Although so, we've had, we've had a common one, which is the Pilgrim's Dole, which is actually a wheat wine. That is the next one I was going to mention on their limited uh, Pilgrim's Dole. It is a wheat wine, which is cool. It's twelve percent. If you haven't had a wheat wine, think barley wine, but with I think it's it has to be at least fifty percent of the uh, malt base has to be wheat. Mm -hmm. I believe that's what it, like the right, definition right. of wheat wine. Uh, wheat wines are really good though. They're like in the vein of an English style barley wine for the most part. Uh, some some places try to you know hop the crap out of them, but like we want that malty goodness, twelve percent. You know, that's how it works. Have any of you guys had Pilgrim's Dole? I had. I've had the pleasure of having it before, and it's a damn good beer. Yeah, it's pretty good. Eric Todd, no. I liked. It. I liked it more than you did, though. What's that, Rod? I liked it more than you liked it. Well, I gave him four and a half on untap. I think you were like three and a quarter, three and three quarters. Yeah, yeah. I was probably you wanted more. You wanted more in it then. Yeah, and and it, it was a good beer, but uh, with wheat wines for twelve percent, I, I feel like it was a little bit subdued, yeah. but it was still a damn good beer, and I would highly recommend it because, like I said, wheat wines are a rare style nowadays. It's been around for a long time, but a lot of places don't brew it. Uh, yeah, to that's actually the one I broke my cherry for wheat wine, so. I lost my wheat wine well, cherry. Well, this is PG thirteen. <laughs> 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 where you're going. Um, another limited brew is their Black Tulip, which is their Belgian style triple, eight point eight percent. They first brewed it in nineteen ninety eight, uh, which is crazy because I've never heard of this beer. It's been around for apparently almost twenty years. Anybody else here? Black Tulip from them? Maybe. Uh, maybe. Nope. No, I haven't had that. No, and I like Belgians. I haven't heard of that one. Yeah, that'd be something that you. I haven't had it either. 
Oh, and you know what, baby? The pairing say semi hard, semi semi hard cheese. I don't know. It's just not fully hard cheese. It's a little bit hard. <laughs> not soft, not hard. Somewhere in between. Yeah. Yeah, it's just it's firm. It's a firm cheese. Um, yeah, so uh, another one they have, which I've heard before, and I don't know if I've had it before. Like I'd have to check my on tap. Probably not. Uh, but I remember seeing it was their night tripper, which is just their base imperial yeah. stout. Uh, 11 and a half percent first brewed 2008. So I don't know if that's like the base, what they use for uh, dragon's milk. I'd assume they would mention that probably not, probably just a different recipe. And if you guys have night tripper, night tripper, I've not had night tripper. I have not either. This kind of seems to be the odd thing with, with the, is it doesn't seem like you get all of their uh, lineups. It's just kind of their core stuff. Maybe I'm, I'm sure it's different in my state. But yeah, or maybe closer to the brewery. Beers here. Yeah, yeah, the beers here. Yeah, so. for sure. For sure, it seems like it seems like their distribution is probably their most popular beer seasonals and like you know maybe a limited release here and there. Uh, as far as their right. seasonals go, they have uh, I believe it's four seasonals. The aforementioned Tasmanian Hatter which Rod talked about. They refer to it as a Galaxy IPA. Here's the thing. Galaxy IPA is not an actual style. It just means they're brewing the IPA with Galaxy hops mostly. But here's the funny thing. It's not just brewed with Galaxy hops. It's Nelson Salvin. So you're talking about, you know, your New Zealand and Australian hops. So that's pretty much what they're going for uh, with that beer. Um, it is a seasonal brew. And they do not mention when they actually... Here's the thing about, again, New, New Holland site is... There's some good information, but there's also some weird information. They say it's a seasonal brew. What season are you guys going to release it in? Who knows? You guess. You guess when it gets released. Uh, it was I first. Got, I got one for you. Surprise. Uh, I, got I feel like it's going to be shots fired here when I say it, though. So apparently Todd has had their coconut rum barrel dragon smoke reserve. <laughs> yeah, what happened? Did not fan? And I'm, and I'm reading his untapped. He gave like 2 and 5, which is solid. But then he says, "Tastes like suntan." <laughs> it was not. It was not good. I like to have it. Again. It wasn't oh, good. It was yeah. so overpowering. Hey, man, that's his opinion. I mean, uh, you know, hey, what, what you know, whatever you got going on. Here's the thing, Todd. Really enjoy your company. I'm gonna have to ask you to leave the fucking chat. <laughs> <laughs> No, you can say you get sometimes those beers that just mm, you think they're going to be amazing and they're, and they're not. They are anything but. I just you know, I had to laugh when I saw Todd's comment. <laughs> and truth be told, was that a beer festival? So maybe, so maybe it was one of those where my palate was, ex, was palate excited. fatigue. I don't know. Yeah, palate fatigue. <laughs> We're gonna go with that. He, he truly loved the beer. You just didn't know. What Come it back, give it another shot, right? <laughs> yeah. Um. Their next seasonal brew is again um, <laughs> going through all the so-called hatters or the hatter series or whatever. They have their white hatter, which is basically the blend of a. It's basically a white IPA. They're trying to blend a Belgian white with an IPA. Uh, a lot of people refer to them as white IPAs. That's what it is. Five and a half percent. First brew, two thousand twelve. Um, their next one is Ichabod, which is their um, their pumpkin ale. I've had Ichabod. Ichabod. <laughs> yeah, Ichabod. Um, they they actually here's here's a crazy concept. Don't want to don't want to get too crazy, but it's a pumpkin ale that has pumpkin in it. They brew it with real pumpkin, not just pumpkin spices. Unbelievable. Right. <laughs> uh, they they brew it with uh, malted barley, real pumpkin, cinnamon, nutmeg. Uh, you know, whole nine, only four and a half percent, but you know, probably one of those pumpkin beers that you can drink a whole twelve ounces of. I'm not gonna say it's like a session beer because. And get this, they usually bring it out around fall, I believe. Yeah, they they do. Summer. And get this, yeah. 19, 1997 <laughs> was the first year they brewed it, so one of their first beers. That's. <laughs> It's got they staying another, power. They have another one that comes out in the winter too called, I think it's Cabin of Fever. And that's what we're going to. Nice segue. Wow, look at that. The okay. last seasonal brew is Cabin Fever, and it uh, it does come out in in the winter. How do I know that? Because Rod just told me, not their website. Terrible website. Yeah, no, it's a, right now. It's a it's a brown ale, but here's the great thing. I love how the New Holland website, they're confused when it was first brewed. It says first brewed 1998 slash 2007. <laughs> we may have brewed it 1998 or maybe 2007. Only nine years separate that. Who knows? Well, they may have changed the formula. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. Or maybe they brewed it in 1998 and they first packaged or released it in bottles in 2007, something. You know it would be great? If the website told us. We're going to get New Holland to get back with us on that one. Yeah, New Holland, we're just going to guess. We <laughs> guess again everywhere. I mean, I love your guys' brews, but this website, while informative, is also lacking information in certain areas. <laughs> Job opening a webmaster. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> There are sour brews. They have the incorrigible uh, series of uh, sour beers. They, uh, I've, I've seen them actually before. They, they are basically in like a blue slash purple tinted um, foil yeah. top. And uh, the first one they released was 2013, which they called a white sour ale, four and a half percent, bombers only. Um, uh, it, it was a wheat beer that they hit with a bunch of um, a, a different. Uh, you know, different bugs to make it sour. Then they came out with the reserve of that, which introduced Michigan blueberries and blackberries, which sounds amazing. That was awesome too. Was it? See that? Now that sounds good. Yeah. That sounds something that I think would work extremely well. And then their other uh, part of their other, uh, or another beer in their series, their sour series is their blue Sunday, uh, which was a 7% uh, just basically sour beer. They, they say the yeast is American ale and bacterial cultures. Um, so of these, of these sours as the incorrigible, uh, reserve, the only one you've had, uh, Eric, anybody else have any of the sours? I had one of their other sours. Mm -hmm. It was the mischievous too. It wasn't from this year. Oh, really, so. The mischievous. Oh my God. Yeah. That one was actually pretty good. Was it? Yeah. Okay. They don't even have that listed on the website because yeah, it, no, because it was like last year's when their series, so. Uh, well, New Holland's going to New Holland at this point, I guess. Yeah, they're very new in their sour series. All right, and then the last little bit of their beers is the Dragon's Milk, their current variants of Dragon's Milk. Uh, they currently have the Mocha Mint, and they say it's uh, Dragon's Milk Reserve Mocha Mint is festive. It's a festive blend of chocolate and peppermint flavors. Do you think they're trying to go against Southern Tears Thick Mint, maybe? Maybe there's also one um, from Oddside in Michigan that does their mocha mint. I don't know if um, Eric's ever seen it, but it's kind of in the same vein. I, know. I think I think it's just one of those things they're going with, you know, chocolate mint flavor. Uh, there's some breweries, you know, you mentioned Southern Tier, Oddside, that have been doing that. So uh, it's a good take, I think, on Dragon's Milk. Uh, I, I'd be curious to see how it is. The only problem is, I think, mint, peppermint, any kind of mint you really use in a beer is all depends on how much you use of it to be mm -hmm. overpowering. Right. Really can. You don't want to drink a beer and then, you know, it's like after you just brush your teeth, not ideal. <laughs> they, they also, Never they mind. also have, and this was sent from Eric to Rajay, which was their dragon's milk reserve s'mores. Wasn't it the s'mores? No. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, they, they say a hint of toasted marshmallow and graham cracker, uh, compliments the chocolate carrier of dragon's milk. Uh, they have a lot of information on here. Hang on, I, I, gotta like, be... I felt like watching the sale lot when I had it. Yeah, yeah, for sure. You're killing me, Smalls. The uh, <laughs> the thing is, is they have a lot of information on here. Beer style, s'mores, bourbon barrel aged stout, degrees Play-Doh. Who knows? Alcohol by vom, 11%. IPUs, nah. Grains, nah. Hops, maybe, nah. Uh, yeast, no. First brood, <laughs> we don't know. So they uh, they forgot basically everything on their page for the beer. And the same thing for the Mexican spice. There's not even a description. Dragon's Milk Reserve Mexican Spice Cake. Beer style, bourbon barrel stout. The rest of it, blank. <laughs> if you're going to have it on your web page, help us out a little bit. Just, just a little bit. Just try a little bit. Um, now, I've had this beer at a uh, at the Detroit Beer Fest uh, 2014, I believe it was. Maybe 15. Old, I forget. But it's the Dragon's Milk Reserve Triple Mash. This is 17%. I have not, that, that's the only one I haven't had. It was crazy sweet, 17%. You're kind of expecting that. I would have liked to try it on a fresh palate and maybe like sit down with it, warm it up to temperature or whatever, but it was my least favorite of the series. But uh, again, it's take it with a grain of salt, A, because it, it's my opinion, but also B, because I was drinking it you know, at a beer fest where my palate was shot and it was probably like 40 degrees. Mm -hmm. um, so that's really it for their... Uh, you know their their history and their beers and their website, which needs just a little bit of help. I think just a little bit. Not asking a whole lot. Just if you're gonna have a beer up there, you have styles and stuff, and you're gonna you know have the uh, the ABV and the IBUs and stuff. Just I mean maybe fill those in, or don't point it like say something about it. I don't know. Helpless. 
Um, so yeah, so to go into personal experiences, I guess, we've already been over what we're all drinking this evening multiple times. So we'll go into first experiences with New Holland. Start off with Todd. First experience with New Holland. Uh, what was the, the first beer you had? What was your first opinion of them? So on and so forth. The beer I had was just the regular Dragon's Milk. Um, I want to say 2013 or 14, somewhere in there. Um, I loved it. And the Mad Hatter I had, you know, I've had several times. Uh, so it's actually probably been a couple of years since I've had that one. So I, that was one of the reasons I wanted to pick it up tonight. Chance to get it, get to see it. So uh, yeah, I mean, uh, I've, I've had good experiences with all, and I've not really thing from them. It's just been like, eh, you know, terrible or anything. It's all been really cool. Cool. Yeah, I mean, um, I think a lot of us are going to be the same way, but uh, how about you, Rod? Huh? Similar experience, something different? Um, I don't even know what my first beer was for them. It might have been one of the Dragon's Milks. It wasn't the Hatter series, but um, – Dragon's Milk was pretty big. I know one of the deals I got was one time the uh, the Cabin Fever. Um, I got a case of that for twelve ninety nine at one time, and so I had to go to the gym. <laughs> that, that was like a couple winters ago, but um, probably Dragon's Milk was kind of the thing that you know I had the biggest feeling about, like man, how good of a beer this is, type thing. Um, you drink so many beers, sometimes it's hard to remember which ones you were actually drinking first or when anything. I would just say the first one that kind of made an impact would have been the Dragon's Milk. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's for most I think of us. I, but I think I, I'll throw uh, the Ichabod beer in there, too, is one of the original. Yeah, Ichabod had, which, yeah. Is, which is one of their oldest brewed yeah. beers. They said 97 on the site. Am I going to believe it? Sure, New Holland. But yeah, no, they said 97. The Ichabod for me is, again, it's, it's a solid pumpkin beer. But once you have the warlock and you have the pumpkin, listen, or, or, or dogfish pumpkin, this, it's hard this to is not southern tier, Rod. This is not southern tier brewery spotlight. No, no, can... I'm just saying it's it's, it's a solid <laughs> beer. I would say anybody likes pumpkin beer can actually enjoy it, but it's not one of my favorite pumpkin beers. Uh, I agree. I think Igabat is kind of a run of the mill pumpkin beer. Not to say it's bad. It's just I don't think it stands out from the crowd. Basically, uh, how, how about you, Eric? First experience with uh, because you're, you're one of the not that don't look at this i'm not being anything bad about this but you're you're kind of one of the newer craft beer drinkers here on the panel last couple of years so be curious you being in michigan what was your first experience was it different was it dragon's milk was it something else yeah it was a dragon's milk and actually it was out of a, a growler instead of out of oh. a bomber bottle or a 12 ounce wow. so we let it kind of age a little bit in that growler and it wasn't like too long because there was a twist on type and they, they had the tape on it and all that. So it wasn't really aged too long, but it had a different, it has a different taste when it comes out of a tap than it does when it, when you're drinking it out of the bottle or pour it into a, um, pour it into a glass. So the first time I got it and he goes, Hey, I want you, my buddy, I was over at my buddy's house for a party of all things. He goes, Hey Eric, you want some, you want something that's called dragon's milk? And I'm like, okay, I, yeah, I'll drink, you know, I'll try anything once. So he poured me a small glass of it and, I had someone that was my first experience of it was I was like holy shit man I'm just tasting the alcohol because that's yeah and this was before I did my started doing my beer review stuff I just got a big pungent of alcohol and you could taste the chocolatey malts too that that come with the dragon's milk and I'm just like oh my god and I kind of almost pushed it away but I kind of downed it you know but it wasn't but three or four ounces of it so I finished it but now that as I'm coming on and I'm doing coming into my second year now, which will be in December doing the beer review stuff. I've came to like dragon smoke quite a bit and I'll have it. I'll grab like a bomber every once in a while. Cause I can get it for like on sale. I think I can get it for like six fifty for a bomber bottle. So I think that's pretty good price for a 24 ounce uh, or yeah. 22 ounce bottle. So every once in a while I'll grab it and I'll, I'll thoroughly enjoy it. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Um... I'm the same as you guys. Dragon's Milk was the first time, probably 2013-ish. Like I said, they didn't start distributing my area until last year. So anytime I would uh, go through Ohio or go to Michigan, I would always grab stuff and bring it back from New Holland. Um, like I said, my seller right now, I have five different variants of Dragon's Milk that I will get to. 
hopefully at some point. Um, but aside from that, like <laughs> I, I, I've had some of their, you know, the Pilgrim's Dole, the Mad Hatter, uh, I had a, uh, their El Mole Ocho uh, years ago, their Mischievous. Um, a lot of these were at the the Michigan Detroit, uh, Detroit Fall Beer Festival that I've, I've, I went to a couple times in a row. So yeah. I was always impressed with No Holland. I, I mean, I wasn't blown away like, oh my God, I need to run and tell everyone about this river. But I was always, it's one of those breweries that if I went to Ohio, went to Michigan, I would bring at least a beer back from them to try because they always had something out that seemed enjoyable, seemed <laughs> to catch my eye and make me want to drink it. So um, I'm glad that they're distributing here in Western New York. I'm happy. Hopefully some of their other stuff outside of Mad Hatter and, um, and uh dragon's milk shows up so uh uh i mean yeah we've talked a lot about this so i don't think we have to go a lot of other stuff so i guess just basically you know is is there any beers from them that you guys have wanted to try uh whether you heard it tonight or you, you know of it coming out whatever and then just your final opinion on top of that on the brewery so we'll start with eric what final opinion on the brewery anything that you want to try from them that you heard tonight in general um a, a lot like with the stone and what, what was the one we did the uh bells uh, yeah bells excuse me uh, solid brewery again you guys if you guys are at a a bar or a restaurant and you see a uh, new holland beer most most times it's going to be a good beer and it's a good offering it's something that you may have probably even heard of before um as as far as a, as a beer that i kind of want to try i want to try that the wheat barley wine that you you guys mentioned I, Pilgrims I haven't don't. seen that around here at all I, I don't know if they I'm sure they distribute it around but it's probably one of the beers at least up here where it, if it's on a shelf it's gone <laughs> that day and yeah. they're probably they're all their cases are probably gone that day I, I think too even though they say it's a limited release on the website Pilgrims Dole I think it's a um, uh, winter slash fall release so I would keep your eye on it over the next two or three months when you hit up the beer store just because of wheat wine at 12%. I don't think they're throwing that out in the spring or summertime. I could be well, wrong. <laughs> I think, I think well, the one, thing, one thing I was going to say, when I had it, I actually had it on draft uh -huh. at one of our local beer places. So I don't even know if they bottle or anything with it. They, they do bottle they Pilgrim's Dole. Oh, they do? Okay. They, they showed it on the website. You know, we know how accurate the website is. About <laughs> the <beer. laughs> they, they could do it in the summer. They could. If they could, hey, they'd be like, you know what? You know, it'd be really cool when it's like about 60 degrees out in the springtime and just fantastic. What? A 12% wheat wine. That's what we want to put it out in July and August, the hottest point of the yeah, year. Yeah. Yeah. It's like after cutting the grass, you're going to go for that 4% American adjunct log. You're going to go for that 12% wheat wine all day, every day. Anybody with webmaster skills, you look at the job inside. I'm just saying, you might want to yeah. reach out to New Holland. I'm just saying. But, but like I said, yeah, if, if, if I see New Holland on the on their beer list, try it. I think you'll be I think you'll yeah. be pleasantly surprised by it if you haven't had any of their beers before. I think I think they're solid, just like yeah. Stone and Bells. I, I agreed. And also, I just want to touch on the website thing. It's a good website. Yeah, I'm joking around a lot, but it's a good website. It's better than the vast majority. It has a lot of good information. But if you do put a beer on your website, it would be just if you do have like places for stats and uh, you know just descriptions, probably fill those out or don't put the beer on your website. Yeah. If you're like here's our new beer. We know nothing about it. Why is it on the web? Just put <laughs> Surprise. it somewhere. It doesn't need its own page. It's just you know. Hey, come on. Uh, so, Rod, how about you? Uh, any beer you want to try from them? Final thoughts? Um, well, I mentioned earlier the uh, Hoptronics and the Tasmanian Hatter. Um, there's a Dragon's Milk Reserve with coffee and chocolate. Oh, got that in the cellar, bro. Got that right in the cellar. There's one. There was one. With, there was one with vanilla chai as well. There's also a Dragon's Milk Reserve with toasted chilies. I have that one in the cellar too. And there's one with raspberries as well. And I have that one that's well, awesome. Why are you all from? Of course, of course, just because of gel, the coconut rum barrel. <laughs> I do not have that on the cellar, motherfuckers. No <laughs> coconut. <laughs> son of a. Son of a. I don't know if they're making all these variants still. Some of them may not. They, they're not showing out of production, but I don't really see them as much. They also have a raspberry lemon one too. That is also that is also. For someone that doesn't get someone that doesn't get New Holland, you sort of a lot in your cellar. I do. I told you. I, 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 I have the five variants, and it's everyone everyone you named except for the vanilla chai. That is also in my fucking. Do you have the El Moli Ocho? No, I do not. Okay, I had that. I had that though before. 
But I think overall, as a brewery, I think, like Eric said, they're pretty solid. Um, you know, if I was going to rate them on a five-point scale for me, they've had some that have been of uh, really good quality. They have some that haven't been as great as I thought they were going to be. I mean, even something like The Poet, again, it's, it's, it's listed as one of the top beers. It gets good ratings. But for me, a stout is supposed to be the big brother to the porter. It just runs a little more thinner than what I like, but I do like the creaminess and some of the other tones with it. So I'd be like a three and a half out of five for me as a brewery. Definitely one I would definitely enjoy. Like Eric said, if you see New Holland, you're going to enjoy their beer most likely. So definitely check them out if you see them. Yeah, I can't, I can't disagree with all that. How about you, uh, Todd? Anything? Uh, yeah, I'd, like to, I'd, like to trust, I'd like to trust some of the other variants of the Dragon's Milk. Oddly enough, in distribution, the only one that I've seen in our area has been Mexican Spice Day. Yeah. Hmm. I think they may have reached over in Louisville, but I don't. I don't really know. I didn't see this one uh, when it came out. So, um, and I would like to try uh, more of the Hatter series beers. Um, not sure that all those reach here either. I don't know. It's just kind of weird. But yeah, I mean, as far as um, you know, their base beers, and I kind of agree with Rod on the poet. It's a little thin, but the, it's you know. It's really good. It's just thin for a stout. So, Holland, if you see them, can't go wrong picking it up. I mean, it's a good, safe. If, you're gonna, if it's something you haven't had, or even if you have had, you know, to revisit and try. Yeah, it's a solid. It's a solid brewery. I'd, I'd put it in the, you know, I don't know, from five to four, you know, four range as a brewery as a whole. No, I, I I would agree with that. Uh, me personally, I, nothing new here, kind of like the other other guys here. Um, it's For me, I don't think they quite reach. Uh, I'm just comparing them to the breweries we've done, Stone, Bells, and them. I think they're a little underneath those other breweries, maybe even with Bells, depending on your like for beer. I think Stone's a little bit better than both breweries personally. Uh, but they are a great brewery. One thing that I mentioned earlier, it, they're reasonably priced in comparison to a lot of other breweries. You can find their stuff relatively cheap. And Dragon's Milk, if you want, if you're one of those uh, craft beer drinkers that maybe haven't, you know, delved into the whole barrel age side of things, and specifically bourbon barrel age things, um, you trying Dragon's Milk's the way to go. It's it's relatively cheap for the style, and it's really good. So you put those two together, you got a win-win situation. Uh, as far as like beers that I want to try, everything in my fucking cellar at this point, because apparently, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, well, I, here, I you try them all. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, that's one of those things. It's like, every, I I bought all these cellar, uh, the, the whatever the the reserve series of Dragon's Milk when I would go through Michigan and when I would go through, um, uh, Ohio, and I would maybe two or three times I would bring back whatever and end up with the raspberry one and the toasted chilies and the coffee and chocolate and the raspberry and lemon and the vanilla chai. And I just haven't gotten around to try them because my cellar's big and I'm an idiot. So it's one of those things where at some point <laughs> what I want to do is get the base beer and then just drink it alongside the other five, hopefully have a friend or two with me because I don't plan to take six, 11% Imperial stouts to the head by myself. Ill-advised. <laughs> Right, there's PSAs all over that, and I know Eric's ready for it. So it's one of those there's things a, where there's a fine line between seller and a warden, right? Yeah, yeah, no, there is, there is, but like New, New Holland's one of those things where it's like I, I've, I have nothing else outside of the, the reserve series from them, which is just because I love the base beer so much, and I think it's a great beer that I was like, whenever I see a reserve and um somewhere and I haven't had it, I'm picking up, regardless of whether I'm trying it now, three years from now, I'm buying that beer. Because they make good stuff, but uh, I, I think we've all talked quite positively about uh, New Holland. Uh, they don't have the distribution footprint that a Stone does. Not even I don't think Bells can compare it to them. Maybe a little bit, you know, similar in the distribution footprint, but they don't have the notoriety that a Bells or a Stone does in the craft yeah. beer community yeah. uh, outside of Dragon's Milk, which most people know. But uh, they do have a, I think, a, a better. Um, core offering a better seasonal offering than most people would expect and you know they, they aren't afraid to think outside the box like their sour series was nice to see from a bigger brewery like that to actually have a release where i mean it showed up i like i said i would going through ohio and some of their uh 
specialty uh, sour showed up there. So it was like, holy crap, you know, it's not just brewery only or specialty releases. So uh, yeah, I, I think they're I think they're a damn good brewery. I'm glad we did them tonight. I'm glad we all had something different to drink too. So we were you, know, you could see the variety throughout the night. Yeah, definitely. Um, Quick question for Eric, since you're in Michigan. Do you see the reserve series, reserve series? Does it sit on the shelves for a while there, or does it go off the shelves pretty quickly? They actually hide them. Because if they put it on the shelves, it'll, it'll be gone as soon as they put them up there. I mean, it's you have to ask to say, hey, where you know, do you have any of the reserve? And they'll go down behind the bar. Here you go. They got to hide it. I was just curious since it's it maybe more readily available there. I didn't know because I it's that way here. If it hits the shelf, it's gone. So I didn't know. You know I was just curious. You know what they should do is put them out and put them behind those glass cases like in CVS. <laughs> like they do a shaving cream. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I need help back here. I'm trying to get some beer. <laughs> I'm looking for some CVS. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> yeah. yeah, open for some CBS. Yeah. <laughs> Don't tease us to CBS right now. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh. That's a touchy subject. Not CBS, CBS, the drugstore. Oh, I thought you. <laughs> <laughs> when he says CBS, I'm just thinking founder CBS in my mind because I'm like, no, you go to the drugstore here, don't have like shaving supplies locked up. Like, why is there? They're like, dude, you don't understand that he will still shave his supplies. No, I don't. Yeah, really? I apparently so. I mean, I wouldn't, like razor, I wouldn't know. A pack of four. Well, Joe, doesn't use a razor. <laughs> Joe doesn't use a razor, but for us who shave, a pack of razors is like 20 something dollars, right? For refills. If you, so I guess there is a market out there for it. I guess so. I never really thought of it that I way. Give but... me the big disposables. Yeah, <laughs> those work just as well as the four blades. With any more comments out there, Jill, before we start to wind down, we, we just had a couple. A GSHL TV said, "Cheers, Rock Canada." Cheers, brother. Mm -hmm. And then Craig finishes up with plenty of oatmeal stouts over here on cask, which he's bragging. Yeah, it's, it's, that's what Craig does, man. Oh, they appreciate it. It's cool. <laughs> but uh those are the only two comments out there. Yep, that's it. That's uh that's that's it right now. All right, before we wrap up, I'm gonna pull this up here. So some of the people I sometimes get asked about the uh the website and everything. So just in case is for some of you out there that have asked about like the website. If you're ever there and you ever want to check it out, it's actually at rodjbeerventures.com, so you can see it here. Mm. There's, some, there's some stuff I post on the website. Some of the stuff out there will be reviews, but other times I'll post beer articles and different things taking place in the beer community. Uh, spot out here, Brewery Give Me Five. I actually talk with different breweries and ask them some questions, and they respond back and provide answers to the questions. So they can, they can learn about the brewery, like where Eric's at in Michigan. Arbor Brewing up in Ann Arbor, they actually had done it. Uh, you go east, you got Trogues on here. You also got Atwater out of Detroit. You got the Claw, Erie Brewing Company. So still building it out some, but if you're ever interested to find out how some of these breweries are doing things, you can always check that out on the website. And as Eric was showing earlier with the shirt that he's wearing, I'm wearing, we actually got the apparel stuff out there too. So if you want to check out some stuff there, that's all out there. And if you ever come to Cincinnati, as I mentioned on the site, all the different breweries listed here. So you have a ton to choose from. I'll be adding more in there at some point. But just if you want to check it out, there's other stuff out there. And, of course, here on the right side, all my connections. If you want to hook up with me on uh, Facebook or Instagram, Google+, Tumblr, all that stuff, you'll find all my details by hitting those links. That all being said, because we care, I'm going to turn it over to Eric for our weekly PSA. All right, guys, if you had too much to drink, please get a designated driver. If you guys are subscribers to my channel and you watch my videos on my beer reviews, you should know this by now because if you're going to be here on Drive Home Drunk, you're going to get pulled over, you're going to do the stupid-ass sobriety test, then you're going to get thrown in the back of a cop car, get a ride to jail, and then you're going to have court fees and impossible prison time, and then if you hit or kill somebody, you guys know you're going to be in the slammer for quite a while, and if you kill yourself, all you've done is – Put yourself six feet under, and you've, all you've done is hurt your family and friends, okay? Sleep off your buzz. Call an Uber, a taxi, Lyft. Call a buddy. Ask somebody at the bar to take you back home that's more sober than you are. Just somebody to come get you, okay? 
Just sleep off your buzz and get your car the next day. If a car's impounded, that's the least of your worries, okay? Just do not do it in this day and age. I just realized I'm going to start calling Eric's PSA. He's a scare straight PSA. <laughs> <laughs> I'm scared of shit out of everybody. <laughs> Help. Help. I'm waiting for grandma to be crying at the funeral at some point. So Yeah, <laughs> yeah don't make your grandma cry at your funeral. Right? <laughs> but seriously, you know, be responsible if you're out there enjoying those beverages. But that all being said, appreciate you guys swinging by for another week and checking out video. Post some comments in there if you guys like what you saw here. There's some other stuff you want to see. If there's some breweries you want us to talk about or take a look at, let us know. We try to get some of the ones right now that are more consolidated. All of us going to usually get access to beers. Mm -hmm. So if you like, if I was to say Ryan guys, well, only me and Todd are getting Ryan guys right now. So unless you want to send some to Eric, and unless I. you send some out, right? So <laughs> that could be a possibility as well. So <laughs> well, wait, wait. so so before we we close it, uh, any any I guess preliminary thoughts on what next week's show or the the week after, whatever whatever next show is, whether it's next week, whatever, what what we can't brewery? People now, that's what we talk afterwards, but. We oh. You can't even tease them right now. We got to tease them. No teasers. No teasers. <laughs> they got to wait to the weekend to see what pops up out there. But um, no, I mean, there's some good ones that are still out there. Maybe if there's ones that you guys want to see that are watching. Or, um, I'm trying to think. Like We talked about uh, Left Hand. That's another one I think that might have some access. There's Avery Berlin that's out there as well. There's Don some – uh, yeah, there's Dogfish Head. There's Southern uh, yeah. Tier. Southern Tier. Um, yeah, so, you know, we'll come up with something, but if there's something you guys want to see, or your questions or a brewery, or if you have questions to a brewery, there are a lot of brewery contacts that I have. So, you know, if there's anything you ever want to ask, let me know, and I'll see if I can find out the information for you regarding some of the breweries. Yeah, and, and if you do watch this, if you are a weekly uh, viewer of the show, uh, like I said, Rod usually puts some something up a few days beforehand, so just you know, keep an eye out on your sub list if Rod is a part of that, and uh, check it out because usually in the description box he will post what brewery we're doing ahead of time in case you want to grab a beer and drink alongside us. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, thanks for hanging in there too because I've been running back and forth as these guys know. I've been dealing with a bad tooth, but it seems like mm -hmm. as you can see, I'm back on the men drinking beer. But <laughs> I'm supposed to go in next week, and I'm going to try to pull it or start. at this point, I'm taking antibiotics and everything feels better. I'm like, do I need to go in? But it came back once already, so I probably yeah. won't go in. Um, but uh, I've got the reviews coming back up. I uploaded a review yesterday, so thanks for everybody that chimed in on that one. And there's some more that'll be coming up there. I'm trying to make them a little bit more funny or entertaining, so we'll see what happens. But you know me, I'm always trying to change something up on them. That all being said, thanks for swinging by to hang out for another beer flow. We look forward to catching you next time. As always, get your beer on, and we'll catch you next Thursday. Deuces.